Welcome to TRS Clips, where you'll find happiness through your own curiosity. If thoughts and memories are analyzed from a biological perspective, hmm. they are basically neural patterns in your brain and the brains of people who have been witness to those thoughts and memories. Quite right? possibly. I mean, uh, consciousness, thoughts, all that seem to be an emergent behavior emerging out of the complexity of our neurons. Uh, I don't know how many neurons we have, trillions of them, and they are all interconnected in various, various ways. And that's a neural network. I mean, we have spoken about AI and all that. So that's a neural network. It's a biological neural network. And the neurological perspective, the scientific perspective is that um, all of this, all of these thoughts, behaviors, emotions, language, everything consciousness it all it is all an emergent property of that emerges out of this com, this interconnected complexity of our brain uh, but there is no way of proving it i mean we mm. can read brain waves and all and we can see that you know in certain conditions we certain regions of, of the brains brain are activated and all that but we still don't have definitive evidence that goes one way or the other it's i mean i'll tell you what uh, consciousness is a very big deal these days in in physics of all places, not biology, but physics. Of course, the biologists and neuroscientists are, are looking at consciousness from their own perspective. In physics, because of the, the quantum angle, we have research being done on consciousness, what consciousness is, but it's more of a philosophical pursuit, the philosophy, uh, the philosophy of physics. And the problem that we are facing is that we don't even have a definition of consciousness. We have the definition of what uh, light is, what energy is, what mass is, what matter is, and so on and so forth, various measures and weights and all that. We don't know what consciousness is. We can't even define it. And yet we we have to make sense of it, but we are unable to. So that is the, the possibly the most profound mystery in all science in addition to time. We also don't know what time is. And maybe these two are correlated somehow. Consciousness and time. And time. And time. Big mysteries. That's why science is so interesting. That's why fundamental theoretical physics is so interesting because we know next to nothing. And there's nothing more interesting to me at least than a mystery, big mystery. And the mysteries don't get bigger than this. Consciousness and time. And time. My question is, you said something like, we're using quantum dash to understand uh, conscious. What did you say? So there are certain interpretations of quantum mechanics. See, see, we know what the equations of quantum mechanics are. Okay, we can use the Schrodinger equation, the Klein-Gordon equation, the Dirac equation to solve various problems in quantum mechanics. We know the equations. We know how to use them. We know how to use them to solve problems. We have solved nuclear, rea uh, you know, so nuclear fission, nuclear fusion. We can use quantum mechanics in technologies. We would not have any of this without quantum technologies. But I'll, I'll have to pause you a little bit. Quantum mechanics is the mechanics of the quantum world. The mm. quantum world is the world in a microscopic level. So if you take a glass, this is made up of atoms. If you can crunch yourself down like Ant-Man and go to the world of atoms, physics is different there. Mechanics is different there. The rules of physics are not the same rules you've read in 8th standard in your physics books. The rules of physics change. Absolutely. Now I'll let you go on because I want to know how quantum mechanics can actually help us understand consciousness in the first place right so so yeah that's that's exactly what it is it is the it is the physics of the ultra microscopic world atoms subatomic subatomic particles molecules all that that's the quantum domain that's a quantum view of the world go deep down all the way down there and the rules the laws of physics are extremely different they're completely non intuitive a particle can be in two places at the same time a particle can also be a wave a wave can also be a particle particles can go through walls solid walls tunnel through them and so on. Extremely weird behavior, but that's how the world works. And obviously all of this that we have around us emerges from the quantum world. So this microphone, it's solid metal or whatever it is, but the properties, the, which are classical from our perspective, just regular properties, they actually emerge from the quantum world. And therefore so must our brain, so must our biology, the DNA and molecules, all that. And if consciousness is an emergent property of the universe, emerges out of complex, uh, you know, uh, organs, like the brain, then there should be a quantum element to that as well. And then there is the possibility that <laughs> in quantum mechanics, there are very weird things. For example, the collapse of the wave function, which I will be very hard to explain, but you know, uh, an atom, uh, an atom can be in multiple states of existence and multiple places at the same time. But the moment you look at it, all those states collapse and there's only one place left. So when you're not looking at it, it could be in multiple places at the same time. We know that. But the moment you take a, do an observation, it suddenly appears in only one place and everything else disappears. Mm. All the other locations somehow magically disappear. So maybe, mm. maybe 
the act of observing it with an, a consciousness causes the collapse of the wave function. Maybe consciousness is what causes collapse. Possibly, that's one of the interpretations. It's not the only interpretation. There are many other interpretations. But maybe consciousness, possibly, perhaps, could be responsible for particles that are in, in a fuzzy state of existence to suddenly resolve themselves in one place. So that would make consciousness an integral part of physics and quantum mechanics. Oof. Then the question is, what is quantum? What is consciousness? And why does it do this, if it, it is the case? It's perhaps an entity in the quantum world which we are figuring out how to quantify. Maybe, maybe there's a whole field of consciousness. Maybe consciousness is not just here. Maybe this is just a manifestation of a universal consciousness. Maybe the entire universe is a conscious organism. I mean, there are various theories that are actually philosophical theories, not scientific theories. These are philosophical theories. There is something called panpsychism. There is something called cosmopsychism. Cosmopsychism says that the entire universe is conscious. Is there any proof? No. Can we disprove it? No. <laughs> Panpsychism means everything, every object in the universe has a certain degree of consciousness. A rock has, doesn't have zero consciousness. It has very low consciousness. A tree has way higher consciousness than, than a rock, but way less than us. A dog, a cat, different levels of consciousness. Humans, as far as we know, the highest level of consciousness. We can introspect. We can think about ourselves. We can meta-think. Think about our own consciousness and all that. And maybe there's something higher out there as well. So there are different ways of looking at it. And it's a fascinating problem. And we don't even have a definition of what consciousness is. And that's one of the big open problems. Hey, if you enjoyed today's clip, make sure you check out all the other clips we've uploaded on this channel. You'll find a clip related to almost every single topic as long as you're willing to search for it.